Hey guys, it's Kaler. Welcome to the YouTube channel. In today's video, we're going to use components inside of other components to make a full navigation prototype using Adobe XD. That's today's tutorial, so let's go ahead and take a look at the project file. Like all of my tutorials, I have the project file linked down in the description. It'll look something like this. I'll have all the colors, character styles, and components you need to complete today's tutorial. We're using Open Sans font today with feather icons. So let's go ahead and get started with today's tutorial. So let's create our first component, which is the card. So I'm just gonna zoom in here onto the artboard and I'm gonna drag out a rectangle. And I'm gonna set this to 384 by 540. It's gonna center this to the artboard just for now. And the next thing I wanna do is create another square this time. So I'm gonna drag that out holding shift. And I'm gonna set this to 140 by 140, center it up and put 100 spacing from the top of our card. I'm also gonna apply a border radius of 18 to this. And inside of that, I want to have a icon centered. So I'm just gonna drag one out and center that up inside of there. We need a heading for the card. So I'm gonna set that to 30 point font. I'm gonna make sure it's centered and I'll just set that to a gray so we can see it for now. And I'm using a bold weight. Gonna center that up. Below that, we'll have a text area. Just going to grab some placeholder text and paste that in. And we're going to set this to open sans 17 point and I'm gonna change this to a regular weight. Make sure it's center aligned. And we'll change that to a gray so we can see that for now as well. Going to center this up and put it 12 pixels below the heading. Grab both of them and put 20 spacing from the bottom of our card. That way when we do our hover effect, it has room to slide up. The final thing I wanna do here is grab the background to the card. Command C, Command V to copy and paste a duplicate and we're going to scale this to one pixel in height so that it's barely visible, if at all. And what that is gonna do is when we do our hover, that is going to expand to the full height of the card and that's gonna be our color slide effect. So now that we have the layout of the card, let's go ahead and finish it. So I'm just gonna select the background of the card, remove the border and apply this card nav color, which is 010101. I'm gonna apply that same color to the square around our icon so that it's not visible right now and remove the border. For all of our icons that are gonna be centered here, we're gonna be using 94A1B2 as the gray color. And I'm also gonna set that same gray to our text. For the body, however, it's not gonna be visible by default. So I'm gonna set it to white and lower the opacity to 0%. Finally, what we have to do is go over to the layers panel I'm just going to click and drag here in the bottom corner to grab both of our cards. Holding shift, I'm gonna select the background card and it will deselect it from our active selection. And with that, we have this rectangle left. So I'm just gonna drag this right here above our background rectangle. And I'm also gonna name this background color so that we know what it is. I'm gonna remove the border and apply the same black color that we're using for this background so that it blends in and it's not visible in our default state. We can go through and also clean this up a little bit. So I'm just gonna rename some of these, changing the name on that icon background to icon background. We'll just call this icon. I'm gonna grab both of those and actually group them together and we'll call that icon group. So we have our icon in there and the background for it. We'll just drag that up to the top. Below that, I'm gonna have our heading so we'll just name that, put it there, followed by our body text, our background color, and then our card background. So that's how I'm going to do the layering for this. So now this is the default state we want for our card. So I'm just going to grab this and hit Command G, and we'll just call this card. And then over here in the property inspector next to component, we'll just select the plus icon, and now we have our card. So then I'm going to add a state now and we're gonna set that to hover. So now we can design what our hover state is going to look like. So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is change the icon color to a white as well as the heading. And then for our body text, we're going to make that visible. With that selected, I'm gonna hold shift and grab the heading and I'm gonna move that up 
until we have 60 spacing from the bottom of our card. Then we can select the background color here in the layers panel. And I'm gonna set the height on this to 540. And then I'm going to drag this to the center of our card. So that is the exact same height as our card is. And I'm gonna set this to the first color we're gonna be using, which is 7C81E3. So now we have our hover state selected. So I'm just gonna change this back to default and we'll head over to the prototype tab. And here I'm just gonna select this wire and we're gonna make sure the trigger is set to hover, auto animate, and I wanna ease out and I'm gonna set this to 0.1 seconds. So it's gonna be a very fast effect. Now that we have that set, we can hit the live preview and you'll notice when we hover over it, we get the desired effect that we want, which is that slide up and the text nudges up as well. So this is the master of our component. So now we can duplicate this to fill out the rest of our screen. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. Holding Alt while I click and drag. And I'm just gonna put this right next to each other. And you'll notice that we have exactly room for five of these. That's why we set them to that width and height. Now here I'm going to go through and change the content in each one of these. So I'll do one with you and then I'll speed up the rest. So here on the second one, I'm gonna double click and so I can edit and I'm gonna call this UX design. For the icon, we can just drag out this UX icon. I'm going to copy it with Command C and then we'll just delete it. I'm gonna double click until I get inside this icon group and I'm going to paste it in and delete the original. And we need to change the name back to icon and we'll just drag that until it is centered inside of that rectangle. So now we have the default state set, so we'll just switch this to hover. Here, we need to change the text to the exact same thing. I am not gonna be switching the body text in this tutorial, but if you wanted to, you would just need to change it in the active state and in the hover state as well. And then finally, we need to paste in that icon once more delete the original and make sure you rename it back to icon. And then we'll just put that back into the center. And we'll set it back to default state. So to test this, we can go to the live preview and you'll see that everything changes the way we wanted it. And I forgot to change the color, so I'm gonna go in and do that. For this one, I'm gonna be using a color code of ABD4EA. And once more, you'll see that we have this. All right, so I'm gonna go quickly change the rest of these and then we'll move on. Okay, so I think I have everything changed here. Uh, I did miss a few things like changing the icon to white on the hover state on this one, but I went through and fixed all of that. So now we pretty much have the entire drop down for our navigation set up. So now we're gonna be implementing the actual nav bar itself, which is pretty easy. We're just gonna drag out a rectangle up top here, and this is 920 by 100. Remove the border and set it to our nav color. Again, that's 010101 using our 12 column guide, which is just the default Adobe XD gives us. I'm just gonna call this learn design. Make sure it's set to 30 point bold. I'm gonna align it to the left. I'm gonna center that vertically inside of our navigation and align it to the left hand side of that column. Over here on the right, we're going to have our links. So I'm just gonna put those in here, FAQs, and then we'll set that to 17 point Make sure it's aligned to the right, and we're gonna set that to semi-bold. Make sure it's centered vertically inside of the rectangle, and I'm gonna to touch it on that right side edge. Then I'm gonna set that to that text gray color. I'm gonna hold Alt and create a duplicate, and I'm gonna put 60 spacing in between each one of these, and I'm gonna go through and create a series of links. 
Once we have that, we can select all of our cards and just drag them into the position we want them in when the link is selected. So in this case, we're gonna select courses and this is going to drop down each one of these cards. For the setup of our final component, all you need to make sure is that all of your cards are at the bottom and the rectangle right here is above them. That way these can slide behind and it doesn't do any weird clipping or anything. So I'm just gonna call this nav background and then I'll just make sure all of our links are in the correct order as well. So once we have that, we can select everything in the design now and hit Command G to create a grouping and we're gonna call this nav full and I'm going to select the plus for a component and you'll see that it takes the grouping name and names that nav full. So this is our component. Now in this tutorial, we're only creating one dropdown for the courses link, but you can create states for each one of your links by simply repeating what we're about to do. So I'm gonna add a new state and this is gonna be called courses. And if you wanted to add one for resources and blog and so on, you could just add another state. Of course, with that, you would have to create something like how we have all these cards laid out. You can make different ones and just have different groupings. So if I expand this, you can see we have all these cards. You could group those together and call that courses and then have another grouping for resources and so on. So to start, we're gonna switch to the default state and I'm going to double click and grab all of these cards. So what I did there was I double clicked to get inside the grouping, selected the first card and held shift and clicked on the rest of them. And then I'm just going to drag this up until it touches the top of the artboard so that it's completely gone. So this is going to be our default state for our navigation. Then we're gonna to swap to courses. And since we've adjusted the default state, it has affected the rest of our states. So we're gonna to have to pull these back down. So I'm gonna repeat that. Grabbing each one of those and just sliding them down until they're in the position that we want them in. Also, I'm gonna be changing the course text to white, and I'm gonna be changing it from semi-bold to bold to notify the user that's what they have active. So with that, we can swap to the prototype tab, and now we need to set up the interaction for this expanding. So I'm gonna select everything, switch to the default state. I'm gonna double click until I can select the course's text. I'm gonna add a interaction by clicking the plus. We're gonna change this to tap, that is important, and we need to select the current state we want it to go to. And since this is dropping down, so they're not gonna see the first part of this up here moving, we're gonna make sure this is set to ease out. And then I'm gonna set the timing on this to 0.2 seconds, so it's very quick. The user doesn't have to wait on that. And then once we have that set up, we can select the courses state. From here, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna double click until we can select the courses text, add a new interaction, make sure the trigger is tap, choose the state as the default state, and here we're going to make sure this eases in and we want that to ease in over 0.2 seconds because the user is gonna see the start of this sliding up. We want that set to ease in instead of ease out. So now you can switch this to the state you want it to be in in your live preview. I'm gonna set it to the default state and then we can hit live preview. From here, you'll notice that my cursor changes when I hover over courses. I can select that and it slides in. And as I hover over each one of these sections, it changes the color of the card and pops up with a little information down here at the bottom. And so with that, we have completed today's tutorial. So that was using a component such as a card with a hover effect inside of a larger navigation component. So that is one example of how you can use components inside of components to create a full navigation inside of Adobe XD. I challenge you guys to finish this or make your own full navigation. And if you do so, make sure you tweet it at me at Kaler Edwards. I'd really like to see what you guys create from this tutorial. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up, subscribe for more design related content. I upload every Tuesday and Thursday, so make sure you have that notification bell on so you don't miss a future video. And as always, have a great day and I'll see you guys in the next one.